Illusion magic is a performing art, and when done right, it can make us gasp and forget that it's just a trick. But does anyone mind? After all, it's good to live in a world where magic is real, even if it's just an act. People have been performing magic tricks for ages, and the first illusionists started to perform in ancient Egypt, Rome, and Greece. The most famous trick from there is the one with cups and balls, making them disappear and reappear, change colors, and so on. But don't think that's all magicians could do in the ancient times. The first levitation tricks date back to those times too. Everything was so shocking to the public that they believed that the magicians doing their cups and balls tricks had supernatural powers. Ancient Greeks especially admired magic tricks. They were even making statues in honor of their famous magicians. Still, around the 4th century, the attitude started to change. People started seeing magic tricks as dangerous sorcery. And early illusionists started to get penalized. Being a magician wasn't safe anymore, and the magic vanished for over a millennium. No one was performing or even talking about it publicly, and the art stagnated for centuries. Around the 16th century, magic revived. People started to perform the first simple acts like card tricks or making the objects disappear. It was the second beginning, the oldest book on magic that's known today. The Discovery of Witchcraft was published in 1584. That book was one of the steps to debunk the myth of illusion magic being something evil and supernatural, logically explaining some well-known magic tricks. With time, people stopped being swindled about magic, and the art was taking off again. If I say, picture a magician, what will you imagine? Most likely, it'll be a person wearing a cape and a tall hat, pulling out a rabbit out of that said hat. Well, this magician's appearance, a cape and a tall hat, was popularized in the 19th century by a French magician, Herman the Great. But the rabbit trick in its traditional form was first performed a bit later by a Scottish magician, John Henry Anderson. Did you know that in Queensland, Australia, people aren't allowed to have a pet rabbit? Yes, the only people who can legally keep a rabbit are magicians and they have to go through a long process and many documents to prove their profession and that they own a rabbit to show to the public. Then, they're granted a license and can officially keep the animal. What did rabbits do wrong? Well, they aren't very welcome there to protect the crops and native animals. For a long time, magic was a street art. But this guy, Jean-Eugène Robert Houdin, changed it forever. He is the father of modern style illusions and he managed to bring the art to big stages of theater, performing for big audiences. He was also a great illusionist himself and, in fact, the most famous magician of all time. Harry Houdini was so fascinated with this person that he chose his stage name in honor of Jean-Eugène Houdin, just adding an I at the end. Harry Houdini started as a card performer but he soon realized it wasn't his cup of tea. Like most professionals, magicians also need to find their niche, the one they enjoy, the one where they're at their best, but also something new that excites people. And Houdini found it, being an escape artist. He would tie himself up in ropes and chains, immerse himself in water, bury himself in the ground, and somehow magically escape. He even escaped from the belly of some sea monster washed ashore. Historians still aren't sure who that beast was. Someone described it as a turtle, tortoise, fish, or whatever it is. So I can't give you more details than that. Anyways, it was washed ashore and the carcass of the monster was used for the trick. Houdini was shackled and climbed inside the creature. The creature was laced and chained. In about 15 minutes, Houdini reappeared on stage and the sea monster was still chained. Houdini just asked for some air, saying that he was almost suffocated by the fumes inside. Illusion magic has nothing to do with supernatural powers, and illusionists who know well that even the most fascinating trick is just a trick and has a logical explanation are typically very skeptical when they hear that someone claims to have psychic powers. Harry Houdini was a professional skeptic and debunker of spiritualists. He even offered a reward for anyone who can demonstrate supernatural abilities and he won't find a logical explanation for it. No one has gotten that reward. Today, the challenge is still open and the prize went up to $1 million. 
I bet you didn't know it, but magicians were very actively involved in the birth of the movie industry, involved as performers and producers. Harry Houdini acted in several silent films. So, remember that guy, Herman the Great, the one in cape and long hat? He was performing some of his tricks along with his assistant and wife, Adelaide Herman. After he passed, Adelaide continued to perform solo and was one of the brightest stars in the end of the 19th century, owning the title The Queen of Magic. She was one of the few magicians who performed the bullet catch trick, which is considered the hardest trick to perform to this day. Her favorite trick to perform was the Phantom Bride. Here's how it goes. The illusionist makes a body of a bride dressed in white to rise on a brightly lit stage. A hoop passes through the body, showing that there are no wires that make the body levitate. Then, the illusionist pulls away the white silk and the bride disappears. How do they do it? Only the illusionists know. Magicians never reveal their secrets to non-magicians, so all that's left to us is being amazed, which I personally don't mind. Another famous trick, cutting a person in half and putting them back together. The trick was first performed in 1921 by an English magician, P.T. Selbit, and it had a raging success, shocking everyone who'd seen the act. Many illusionists repeated and improved the trick afterwards, but I'm here to tell you one story. In 1956, a guy was performing it on live TV. As soon as he divided his wife in half, the broadcast stopped. The TV viewers were mortified, thinking that something went wrong and the host cut off the show. Turned out, everything was fine. The show got cut off because they ran out of time, and the timing wasn't exactly perfect. In the past century, illusions have escalated. Today, professional illusionists throw even more spectacular shows by making cars levitate or planes disappear. One of the most famous modern magicians is David Copperfield. Yes, his stage name is inspired by a Charles Dickens novel. Charles Dickens was actually an illusionist himself back in the day, just saying. David Copperfield has started with card tricks as well, but his professional specialty are grand illusions. One of his most famous performances is The Escape from Alcatraz, a carefully guarded prison only one prisoner in history managed to escape from. Copperfield did the same, and no other illusionist yet repeated the success. Then, he made a whole plane disappear, which he performed with a live audience and repeated several times. In the 1980s, he made the Statue of Liberty disappear in front of a live audience on Liberty Island. He raised a screen in front of the statues, and when he dropped it, the statue was just gone. Spotlights were passing through, showing that there were no mirrors and that the statue was really gone. Then, he raised the sheet again, and when it dropped, it was back. I know, I know. You want to know how he did it. Okay, I'll reveal this one as an exception. Like everything with illusion magic, it didn't vanish. In fact, the statue was hidden in plain sight, behind one of the towers holding up the screen. The bright lights shining through are actually important for the trick. They blind the audience and no one can notice the hidden statue behind the tower. But how did he move the statue? He didn't. He moved the audience. People were standing on a stage that can be rotated. Because of the light and the loud music, people didn't even notice they were moved and then moved back. Did I ruin the magic for you? Sorry about that. But that'll teach you to never watch trick reveals, unless you want to become a magician, of course. Magicians even take a magician's oath before another magician can teach them tricks. The oath is to never reveal the secret of the trick to non-magicians so that it doesn't ruin it. Also, it turns out that magic tricks aren't covered by intellectual property laws. If a magician comes up with an original trick, it can be stolen from them by a different magician and there will be no consequences for them. So, be careful if you want to become the next Houdini or David Copperfield. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.